Some things never change, huh? Well, I guess we're going to talk about it. We are back in our garage for another video, and today we are talking about the oil filter housings on the B58. This is definitely becoming a more and more common failure point where you experience leaks due to various issues in the oil filter housing. And I haven't made a video on it up until this point because I hadn't had any issues with mine, but unfortunately that day finally came and I'll be posting a DIY to show you guys how to replace it. But in the meantime, we will go ahead and talk about this bad boy. You know, unfortunately we're divorced, but I still talk about her. So let's go ahead and go over what went wrong, what potential issues you guys might be facing and how you'll know if you need to replace this part. So hopefully you guys find this video useful. Now, as always, for everybody that's new to the channel, I create these videos to help keep you updated on the latest developments in our community, as well as discuss technical topics so that we have a better understanding of how our engines work. So if you're interested in more videos like that, be sure to subscribe because there will be a lot more coming out in the future. So first of all, I want to talk about how the oil filter housing works. I know at face value, it seems like just a really simple piece of plastic that's bolted onto the side of your engine, but it actually has a lot of engineering built into it, which I think BMW put a lot of work into developing it to make sure that it works properly without potentially causing issues. So first of all, let's talk about what we can see here. So of course the oil filter housing is bolted onto the side of the engine on this flange and we've got two ports for coolant to come in and out and a bunch of ports for oil to come in and out. And the reason why you need both coolant and oil ports is because this also serves as an oil cooler. So on the opposite side, you have additional ports where your oil cooler will mount and coolant comes in and out of these two ports and oil comes in and out of these two ports. So the way that this actually works is first oil is pumped up from your oil sump into this housing, it goes up into the oil filter and filters out any sort of debris or anything you wouldn't want in your engine. Then it goes through your oil cooler to make sure that it's as cool as possible. And then it gets dispersed throughout your engine. So now you have clean, cool oil to protect all of your critical components. It also has this extra piece, which originally I thought it was a thermostat for the oil cooler, but it's actually a valve that prevents it from being overpressurized. So if for any reason there's a blockage inside of the oil cooler that prevents oil from flowing freely, this bypass valve will open up and make sure that oil at least gets to those critical components. So even if it's not getting cooled, it will be lubricated and that'll give you time to hopefully save the engine and turn off the car before something catastrophic happens. Now, like I said, this is pretty complex. I wouldn't have thought of all of these, you know, overpressurized valves being built in, but of course there are still additional issues that we can have, primarily being leaks. So that's what I faced. And for reference, my car was at 65,000 miles. When I started noticing a leak, I actually noticed my oil level was dropping and my coolant level was dropping, which made me instantly look at this piece since it has oil and coolant flowing through it. Now there are a lot of potential failure modes that people are running into. Mine seem to just be a gasket. And so there are a bunch of gaskets obviously on both sides for all the oil and coolant ports. And if one or all of them are leaking, then you will see various amounts of oil or coolant leaking on your car. The other thing is cracks, which thankfully I did not experience. I've gone over this a couple times and I don't see any evidence of cracking myself, but a lot of people have seen inside of these ports they'll crack and then you know the gasket is pretty much useless at that point. So that's when you'll begin to see oil or coolant leaking as well. So like I said, I looked through mine, I didn't have any cracks and I think that's the biggest issue people consider with this, you know, being plastic, it can break, but I do wanna be a little contrarian, not that that's a surprise to you guys at this point, but you know, I don't necessarily think that plastic is a problem. I've worked in automotive for a long time, a significant amount of that time was in plastic injection molding. And even now in my current job, I do, you know, changes from metal to plastic for various reasons. And this does have a lot of benefits. You know, it's lighter, it's cheaper, it's easier to manufacture, more complex geometry. But in hindsight, of course, you know, the first priority is it needs to work. So 
The issue that I think we're having right now is that this was not designed properly for plastic use. You know, there are some metal versions of these available for other engines, but for our engines, it came in plastic. And as you know, these engines are pretty modular from BMW, so I'm not sure why some got metal and some got plastic, but I don't think they did a good job of updating the design for plastic use. Primarily when you look around some of these ridges, and I'm not sure if you can see this on the camera right now, but I'll try to post a close up because the issue that I thought I had was that my oil cooler was not fully seated. And if you look at it from the side, it looks like there's basically a gap all the way around. But what it actually is, is basically the surface for those oil and coolant ports are raised up and they only have these thin barriers to hold the gasket in place. And that's the only thing sealing up the surface. And I think that's the biggest problem here. These port holes are probably too thin in the walls. And in general, I think it should have just been a flat surface where the gaskets are raised up and sealing, you know, doing the whole job. So I'm not sure why they did this other than maybe additional weight savings. Like you can see how many holes and gaps they built into here. They really didn't want to just fill it up with plastic. And that would, of course, cost extra money. But I think that would be a solution that would make this plastic work a lot better and last a lot longer without cracking. Now, even despite that, you know, if they design this perfectly to be stronger as a plastic component, the gaskets still have a tendency to leak, especially in applications like this. You know, as it heats up and cools down over time, it'll get harder and harder and those gaskets will just not have the elasticity they need to seal up properly and they'll begin to leak. Most of the components like this that I see lasting longer use silicone because that generates almost like a semi-permanent barrier to seal up these components, but it's a lot messier, not really ideal. And so I think from a BMW standpoint, they don't see that as a big enough issue to change the design to use, you know, sealant. So they've just been using these gaskets forever. It's the same thing we see on like valve covers and things like that. The only difference here I think that frustrates people more is this is not just mounted on the front of the engine like older N-series engines. This is mounted underneath the intake manifold and with our intake manifold being water-cooled, it just takes a lot more work to access this piece and replace it compared to older cars. But it kind of is what it is, you know, we signed up for this modern technology. It has so many other benefits. I guess naturally it comes with a couple downsides. Now the good news is there is a new aluminum oil filter housing that is on the market. A couple people have been posting about it on Facebook groups and different areas. I am a little apprehensive to try it. I honestly saw it a couple months ago, but I didn't buy it because there was so much information kind of flying back and forth that it almost seemed too good to be true. Some people thought it was designed for a different engine or that you know, it was missing gaskets and things that we needed. And so I kind of held off on buying it and I went ahead and replaced it with just another OEM plastic piece. And I guess I'll explain a couple of my concerns and things that I'm waiting on since this is pretty new before I would consider upgrading and going this route. One of course is, like I said, plastic isn't just necessarily the enemy. Metal can be manufactured a lot stronger, but that doesn't mean that it's going to be better out of the box. And some people were asking, you know, can't they just swap a TU one onto their cars? But even the TU engine comes with a plastic oil filter housing, so that's not an upgrade either. But what I can say is if they designed it properly, it should be much stronger. My biggest concern is that, you know, they took all of the engineering into account and that all the components around it are working properly. Like I said, this pressurization valve needs to open at the right time so that it can be bypassing oil in case there's a blockage inside of the oil cooler but it also can't open up too early. So if they're potentially using like a cheaper one or whatever, that could cause issues. Also, this whole thing being plastic prevents it from transferring any heat until it actually gets to the oil cooler. So if this whole thing is aluminum, it's going to get a lot hotter as well. And I saw a lot of people commenting on that, that one, potentially it could affect the cooling of your oil, maybe better or worse, you know, there's a lot of theories behind that. And also could that heating cause the gaskets to fail earlier as well? Again, I don't know. I think a lot of people are more concerned about the plastic cracking than the gaskets leaking because the gaskets seem to last longer. But, 
you know, we're really just waiting on more data to make that decision. So the good news is at this point, we have seen a couple people install it. We know that it fits, it works at least. They've reported going on test drives without any issues or leaks or anything like that. So that's definitely good. Another thing is where the actual oil filter mounts. You know, a lot of people have seen the issues folks have with their oil filters getting stuck inside of the oil filter housing, which causes other issues, you know, trying to get all the plastic and, you know, paper material out. So if all of these tolerances aren't correct, I'm not sure if that could cause additional issues either. You know, again, we'll just wait to see if the people that have installed it already have gone through some oil changes without a problem. That would give me a lot more confidence as well. But yeah, you know, again, this is our bed. We made it. Time to sleep in it. I think that hopefully this does not get blown out of proportion. The part itself isn't that expensive, but it's just really hard to access and annoying that you have to replace something like this. It's just something that BMWs have been dealing with for a long time, and I guess the B58 was not immune this go around. Time will tell if these upgrades are, you know, much recommended. Maybe BMW will come out with their own metal version. We'll just kind of have to wait and see, but I think for now I'm just going to keep using my plastic oil filter housing that absolutely definitely will not just fail again. But if it were to fail, maybe I can try out the aluminum version at that point. And that's kind of my, you know, recommendation to most people. If it's not failing right now, you probably don't want to upgrade to the metal one yet. We can just wait for a little more data on that. But if you do upgrade, please post results, post your feedback so people can get a feel for how that thing is working. And if it does become a really viable solution, then I know a lot of customers will be ready to go that route. So, yeah. I think that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching and I hope this helps. And if you have any other questions or comments, leave them down below.